What's up everybody, M54Gasm here, or Justin as you know me in the groups. Finally back with another update. I know it's been a few months in between the updates and I'm, it's summer now so you know I'm getting things together, I'm getting my money up. It's the only reason the trans build hasn't come yet guys is because I need to get the car sorted first, the engine, make sure there's no misfires and stuff. And then I, you know, I gotta, I gotta get my money up too, you know, I'm not rich, so. But it's coming, it's coming this summer for sure, like soon, soon enough. It's, it's, it's next on the list guys, so. First of all, we got our upgraded parts finally. I've been waiting to fucking install these forever. I couldn't even sleep last night knowing that I'm getting them today. Um, basically, this is gonna make the car a fucking beast. Should not have to worry about fuel. Kinda worried about my Helix three times, how the pressure's gonna hold up, but uh, I guess we'll find out, you know? All right. Say hi, Dixie, for the camera. Yeah. yeah. All right, guys, so we got the, starting off, we got the six and line right here, big, Meaty motherfucker, bro. We're ready to put this in. Been waiting on this for a while. All right. We got our uh, fuel pressure regulator. This is going to be one of the big head honchos in this setup. Is this? It's all going to come down to this. If you can't get the fuel through the regulator to the tank, you know, then it's pointless installing all these big pumps and everything because you, you still have these bottlenecks. So, anyway, this will be released. Uh, I'll release who made this and uh, when it's going to be sold and available to you guys. I'm going to be the last person testing it for him. So we got a fancy regulator there. We have our dual 535s on a hob switch. So I'm keeping my uh, 535 set up, but I'm just adding another one basically. Uh, I know I won't have any problems with the EKP because I've never had a problem with a single 535 and this other one's going to be running off the battery in a relay. So it's not going to affect the EKP. This is a big old inline inlet filter we got here. The hob switch right there to activate it, a bunch of fittings and everything to go. Got some brand new spark plugs, of course, going to throw them in because we won't be able to test, see how it does. The only way we're actually able to run two 535s, guys, is with this check valve right here. This is the check valve. There's no other way to run two 535s without it. I'm not too sure on the specifications on, you know, how that goes and all, but yeah, basically, let's uh, head to the shop, guys. I'm going to start putting this in. Um, See the results? I cannot wait. It's been a long fucking awaited, so. All right, guys. Got uh, most of it in. Pretty much everything's in now. Just gotta put the inline filter right here. Six and line all the way back. Didn't really show much of the install because we were just working on it, just trying to get it done, you know. Uh, it's really not that hard. It's just tedious. A lot of setting up things, so. Well, we'll get the top of the car set up now at the hobs and we should be uh, should be good to go. We got the dyno here. Gonna hit this dyno, move this fucking crazy ass thing. <laughs> yeah. All right, guys, welcome back. So, I guess I'm just gonna go over the install really quick. Uh, I just want to say I'm not a, doing a complete DIY on how to install the pumps, how to install the regulator. They are pretty self-explanatory. Same way you install, there's probably a hundred videos on YouTube on how to install a low pressure fuel pump or how to install a regulator. Uh, not many videos online really probably about how to install a six and line, but I mean, it's pretty self-explanatory guys. I'll walk you through it, all right? All right, so let's get started. This is gonna be how we're gonna set up this hob switch, all right? Excuse my car, it's a little messy. All right, I guess you know what? We're gonna start with the trunk. So start with the hob switch. Take your battery cover off. You're gonna have your lines here. You're, uh, you're gonna make sure that this fuse side is on the, and this box is uh, on the battery side. You wanna make sure this side's on the battery. Green's gonna go to positive. The uh, black's gonna go to negative, of course. We got that right like that. We're gonna just, my seat actually, and excuse my car, it's a mess. I have my whole, all my tools, everything in the back. Stock regulator here, these tiny little lines, all that. You know, I'm done with that anyway. <laughs> so if you can't pop your seat back, you're just gonna pull these tabs off, slide this back. And I'm trying to get it so you can see back here, but these lines, you're just gonna push both these lines for the hobs right through the back, feed it out. It's kind of a pain in the ass, honestly, guys. You use your imagination. Here we go. I haven't even covered anything yet because I'm still testing. This is actually with a full tank. Doesn't look like there's any leaks, so that's awesome. So, uh, Basically, you know, just pop off your lines here, install your pumps, 
you're going to need to drill um, two bolts into the top hat if you don't already have a system you actually whatever kit you guys get it'll probably already come with the bolts drilled in and everything like that in the top half of the positive and negative to the hobs so uh, don't worry about that I guess but uh, anyway I had to do it because my top hat was broken that I sent uh, the guy who made the system for me so I had to do it you know when I got the parts anyway it's gonna run those black line to the negative uh, green line to the positive you notice we have the other wire coming right out back here right to the hobs goes in doesn't matter what side these go on it does not matter at all just put them in there let's go, let me go around the other side guys so you can try to make this quick you know it's pretty much all you need to know should be able to install it with this info i'm giving you like i said i'm not doing a full diy it was a little pain in the ass a little finagling had my buddy help me fish this line up and everything he actually helped me a lot so uh shout out to jeffrey but anyway uh, I, we actually did this at the shop and we had some problems with the fuel pump um, the release or the check valve for the dual 535s was actually bad it must have just been shitty part uh, the guy tested it before he sent it to me just unfortunate that little plastic uh, flapper inside broke so we did away with the second 535 I'm still running my primary 535 but instead I got a 525 because that has a built-in check valve inside the pump already so I just did away with that extra stuff. I gutted it, just put the line, the wide pipe back in. That's all good. Anyway, so we're on the second side. Uh, here's the regulator, and you adjust this with the, the spring inside is what adjusts the pressure. You simply just take a five millimeter Allen and twist it right to uh, release pressure, uh, or I forgot which way it goes, but right to release, left to, uh, to increase pressure. So what this does is also is it's going to let us run more fuel in general. The lines are so much bigger, feeding right to the right from the pumps. All right, they're just it's they're just dramatically bigger. Not to mention this. Now, can you guys see this? I'm trying to get a good view. This is the stock fuel line. All right, this is the upgraded six and line. You're going to put the adapter on top of here. Always use some hose clamps. I need to clean this up and stuff, guys. I'm going to drill some holes through here so I can put the hob switch through this plastic or rubber so it looks clean I could shut the seats and everything but anyway there's no leaks full tank everything's good we tested everything the regulators running perfect we're about to go do some pulls in a second so here's a way that will really save you so much time in running a freaking vacuum line all the way from down here to the front of the car you already have one set just blow out the stock fuel line replace it with the appropriate adapters you know get a little uh, T, T connector there um, the little tees for the vacuum you're going to use like a little bigger than a half inch for this though this is the only difference in size you need you're going to need a little bit bigger to fit on this adapter of a vacuum line so i got a bigger one then i'm running one eighth the rest of the way all right so you're going to blow out this fuel line you can just connect it to there and uh yeah i'll show you the front it's easier with a buddy you fish this up through the bottom it's really not hard you take off the one cover down there guys fish this line up through the bottom catch it in there just clamp it on good all that set you know basic diy stuff you guys know how to do that stuff let's see if we can peek under the car really quick all right we're gonna come up you see my uh inline filter that's my inline filter right there so uh i have the line running all the way back can't see it because of the covers but up into the tank back there but anyway i uh i have an ethanol sensor installed up there also and uh Basically, I don't have the, cover or the, I don't have the uh, adapter for it yet, but it's all set to go. I'm going to show you guys what you got to do in the front of the engine now. Quick. I'm trying to make this quick. I did black out my headlights a little. A little too dark. They might be a little rice, but uh, I'm going to I'm gonna lighten them up a little bit. It does look fucking badass. Cannot deny it doesn't look badass. <laughs> anyway, tired of that pre-LCI look. So we're going to go to the top here. All right trying to get in there you guys see the from the intake manifold to the blow-off valve I have another T right there to connect it because I don't have a bung for the charge pipe so it's even easier right here and then I have from the T for those you just run that one vacuum line down to that fuel line that I showed you the stock one you cannot see it down there but you literally just run it to that stock fuel line that make sure you blow out all the fuel and they'll uh, be a little adapter for it literally just hook it up and that's your vacuum from that hobs all the way back there all right pretty simple 
you're going to replace a couple fuel lines up top the high pressure one you know it just clicks in those blue tabs that little line clicks in you're going to replace it with the other adapter that's going to go to the six and line literally just run that line up right to the right to the, where the other one's routed honestly i mean it's pretty simple i mean i don't know what else to really show you guys right now to explain it uh the only issues i had was that uh check valve being bad so that's why i installed the the 525 it's not gonna matter that 525 flows plenty enough didn't even need the 35 the 535 only flows a little bit more the difference is the 535 has less amps but it doesn't matter because i'm running it off the battery anyway so if you guys see that's how it's set hobs to that just like that baby just like that pretty simple pretty simple guys uh if you have any questions comments concerns just let me know uh, i'll try to help you guide you through everything but like i said it's, it's pretty self-explanatory you know you just wind there adapter just drop in freaking regulator you fish the lines up through the other side you want to put the regulator in first before the fuel pump it's easier put that in put the dual pumps in hook everything up and uh just do the things i showed you at the front of the engine swap out those couple lines that's pretty much it guys um i guess it's time to go take some pulls we're gonna go record some logs it's not too bad out today i think it's like 45 the other day it was 75 it's just michigan problems guys it gets fucking cold here so out of nowhere but hopefully we get some traction uh i did already test this system out before i recorded this video to show you guys uh, at 28 psi and i'll tell you right now it's it's working perfect <laughs> so uh let's go get some pulls in huh let's go get some pulls in at 30 32 psi maybe let's see how she uh, holds up then all right guys getting ready to log this fourth gear we have a pretty clean stretch of road over here not many cars just log going running pretty good i do have that ignition misfire i'm still dealing with it's pretty annoying i'll be honest i'm sick of it but uh I'm trying to source it down man i'm about to swap in a new injector index 12 as we speak i have two laying around i have already done that before last summer didn't seem to fix the issue but maybe it will now Let's see if we can get a nice pull in uh here make sure these tires are warm huh sunny day now follow up the last update of this video i just installed oh gotta get to the springs fixed i just installed the upgraded pr coils they look very nice in the engine bay everything looks sweet i gotta say they do look cool and badass as hell they, they the same color as my car and they they just draw some eye you know something else going around the top of this engine bay since it's such a sleeper engine with everything in the bottom and the side of the car 
It's nice to have some things that look pretty cool. All right, we're gonna go do our first test pulls. figured out um, so anyway we're gonna look at the first log I took this is on my public this is the last log I uploaded into the group before I did the fuel mods all right as we can see I'm gonna start the pulls gonna start right about here look at all these curves and everything so improper but we're gonna start off 3,000 all right 30 Taper down 29, taper down 28, taper down 27 at 4K already. Look at my ignitions all off. My low pressure fuel pumps at 69. My high pressure fuel pumps are good because we just started the pull. We just started to hit this boost at 4K. Now we're gonna see how quick it goes down. Look at the, the fuel pressure already dropping. Already dropping, boost fluctuating up and down, up and down, all jagged. Look at the line right there. Up and down, look at the ignition. All off, not proper. High pressure fuel pumps dropping. High pressure fuel pumps dropping, 15, now it's bad. Now low pressure fuel pumps in the 50s at only 4,900 RPM, 30 PSI. All right, the high pressure fuel pumps at 13, which is really low. Uh, JB4 has the high pressure fuel pump different, so what you do is you times it by uh, 150, I believe. So you times uh, 13 times 150 and uh, you get your results. So we'll go here, we we'll go down. Look at the fuel pump drop to 10 during the pull. This is absolutely horrible as we're at 54 low pressure fuel pump right now. That's absolutely horrible. Ignition is all off. Every Everyone's all off. Boost is starting to drop. We're at 26 because we have that taper in this log and actually tapered down a little. Tapered, I stayed higher boost for a while than most times for my tapers, but yeah. So it's dropping 5,626 PSI, low pressure fuel pump 11, or, or sorry, 55. My high pressure fuel pump's only at 11, so the low pressure fuel pump's starving the high pressure fuel pump that you can see here. Look at look at these lines, all right? Just take a look, look at, look at all this. This is just everywhere, all over the boost curve, everything, ignition, the fuel pump. When you're in the low 50s, guys, that's dangerous. You do not want that. 54, 54, 52. Now we're getting super low. Uh, the high pressure fuel pump spiked up at a, at a 18 right there, which is 2,700 PSI, which is good, but that was only a quick little spike because then it drops right there to 12 as the fuel pump's at 57. Low pressure fuel pump going up, going up. As you can guys see, this is just a shitty, Shitty law. This the car's running garbage. You won't be honest. I'll be honest. The car's running garbage before these fuel mods. All right. I can tell the difference now. Let's go and let's look at the 
look at the new log. Look at these lines, baby. Look at this. This is how it's the log is supposed to look. This is after the upgraded parts, guys. Look at my ignition. All with each other. All with each other. And you know what? These this log is before I installed the PR coils, by the way, guys. This log is before I installed the PR coils. So the fuel pump, the regulator, the line, everything made a difference. Alright, so let's start. Let's start the log, all right? All right, where are we at? Three, 3,000, I didn't hit it yet, I didn't hit it. I'm probably gonna start hitting it right here. Start hitting it, look at that high pressure, was that idle? You know it's idle. Start hitting it, with that low pressure spikes. Look at how it raises under boost. Now the low pressure raises, 85. High pressure's at 15, 14. Now we're hitting boost, 15. Now it just holds 18, which is 2,700 PSI of the rail pressure holding. Look at that low pressure drop. Look at the lines, guys. Just This is all you need to tell. Look at how great the car is running. That's when I let off. It's the end of the pull. So let's go. Look at We're holding boost. 29, 29, 30, 30.7, 31, 32.4, 5,000 RPM. Look at the high pressure pump. 18 just stays at 2,700 the entire pull. All right, look at the boost. Look at the ignition. Every one of them is on spot with each other. The low pressure fuel pump is not dropping. 85, staying there, staying there. Look at this. I got no timing corrections in the cylinders either. No timing corrections. We'll go nine, look at this. 6,000 RPM, still holding that boost to red line now. Look at that. All the way, baby. Look at that high pressure fuel pump. Look at the low pressure. Low pressure doesn't move, stays at 85 the whole time with this system. Boop, and then we get off, and the low pressure drops back to normal idle. About 67, 65, look at that. Look at this curve, just look at this boost curve. Everything is so beautiful, guys. So, to wrap this video up, I do wanna apologize. Um, I'm really just uploading this right now, guys. To give you an update on the car again and how the build's coming. Honestly, I'm still dealing with a slight misfire in six at Redline, uh, narrowing it down to every dude. We've done everything now, but I'm narrowing it down to it might be an injector seal, it might be a problem with the seal and the injector. So I didn't actually replace the injectors with brand new ones. I put a used one in. Maybe that's the issue still, but we'll find out soon enough. I apologize about these dyno videos, a fail. I just wanted to show you guys that I've been trying all I can to get this car to work right. Um, as you see, it, I mean, it's working great now. I mean, you, you can see this log. That just tells you how it pulls. I can feel it pulls like a fucking train. Like, I know I've said it before, the car's fast as fuck. Shout out Michael Hollingsworth. Shout out Rod something. He's been hooking me up. They've been taking care of me, man. Trying to get this car, the trans to hold. It holds on the street, but it doesn't hold in the dyno, and that's due to the load. The dyno's requesting more load, and it's really just, I guess the trans can't hold at that boost right now. So if I had to guess, I'm over 650 wheel right now, running 32, 33 pounds of boost on fully 85 with all these fuel mods now. Um, but we can't dyno it, and I'm sorry it's a fail right now. The only thing, option left, really, is my built trans. Um, I have mixed options about what I'm gonna do too. I might, I might do the diesel trans swap now. They're making an adapter for the diesel trans and apparently the diesel trans holds more than double the torque and power as our standard 6AT trans, 6HB 21s do. And when they're tuned, they can even hold more power, of course. So uh, I think I might do a diesel swap. It doesn't look too complicated, not too much programming or nothing. Uh, few parts and it is expensive, guys. Like I said, it's the only thing that's holding me back right now is the expense, but the car is running good now. These, these mods are in, the logs are so clean. I'm gonna post these logs in the description, show them to all your tuners, whoever the fuck you want. You need these mods in your car. If you want your car to be an absolute animal, you want it to be healthy. I mean, look at everything that this car, look at these fuel mods, that they literally fixed everything. My ignition, my fuel pressures, obviously they fixed the fuel pressures, but the boost, how I can hold it, take to red line, look at the flat curve, everything guys. But stay subscribed, stay tuned. We're gonna get this car situated soon for some numbers. We wanna see some numbers. 
The draggy, I'm gonna get the draggy in too. I just wanna make sure the car's running 100% before I go post draggy times because I don't want it to be disappointed or get some haters on it because the draggy time isn't what it was supposed to be because of some ignition misfires. Well, it's not ignition misfires. Injector misfire, whatever is going on with that cylinder six. But uh, yeah, I'm gonna, we're gonna figure it out guys. Just like, comment, and subscribe. Please stay tuned. I'm, Shit's coming along. Sorry for these long updates. Um, all I can say is I'm trying as best I can. I'm sorry to let you guys down with these 19 T's, but the Franken turbos will probably be going in very soon anyway. So honestly, I think I'm done with the 19 T's. They're smoking way too much now. Smoking way too much. It's embarrassing when I pull up anywhere. So, all right guys, I love you all. To the haters, fuck you guys. Why are you even watching my videos if you don't care about my car? Just suck a dick. <laughs> Have a good day, guys. Let's run it. Go go. Bye bye. Kitty snack. Kitty cat snack. <laughs>